How's the uh, how's the elbow? It's doing better. Yeah, it's doing a lot better. Um, got all my strength back. You know, you know, throwing football around, feeling good out there. So we didn't talk to you after after the game, and haven't I guess since. But like, so it just kind of went weak to you, or what? what what, what happened exactly with that? And did the coaches also tell you maybe not to try to make the tackle in the future? Um, you know, biggest takeaway from that play would probably just be, you know, don't throw it to the other team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can talk <laughs> about tackling all we want. I shouldn't be having to make a tackle. I shouldn't be making that mistake. And uh, that's on me. That's me, you know, making a bad play worse, uh, in my opinion. And that's just, you know, something that I got to get better at and something that we've been stressing this whole week, you know. Coaches have been stressing and they've been on me and, you know, I'm, I'm my hardest critic. And so I'm not going to let them be any harder on me than I am on myself. And so you know, I know that that's on me. Is that kind of something to call routine? Yes. Is it tough as a quarterback to not try to make those plays? No, I mean. Like not try to. Throw the, inter I mean, make like, the plays offensively. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you practice one way the whole week, always getting it. Um, you know, always getting the look, always getting the guys blocked to where, you know, we have the team running wide open and, and it's a little shovel pass and, and then we get in the game and the guy kind of plays between both of us and so the shovel pass turns into a real throw and then the guy on him and I just got to know, hey, sometimes they get us. Sometimes they beat us on a play and I got to throw the ball away, I got to do a better job with that, throwing the ball away or, you know, holding on to it and just running out of there and um, knowing that, you know, protect points in the red zone, protect points in the red zone. Every possession's got to end with a kick. And that's something we've really stressed this week. Every possession has to end with a kick. We always got to reserve the right to punt. And also, we're not bad if we're ending it with a field goal rather than, you know, with an interception. Looks like you're much healthier at receiver right now. How's that feeling uh, out there at practice? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's huge for us, definitely. Uh, all those young guys being healthy, uh, getting CJ, everybody back out there. TJ Hammonds, I know he got to play a little bit uh, last game at AM. That's been a great addition to us as well. He brings some fire, brings some energy. And obviously, having Traylon, Trey back, that's huge. You can match with CJ, Chase Harrell, those type of guys. Um, the receiving core, that's, that's really, we feel great this week. What do you see out of the Kentucky defense? Um, you know, they're, they're a big defense. Uh, if you look at just pure numbers wise, I mean, they're, they're big up front. Um, I think they got like two, 360 plus guys. And they got some big defensive ends. You know, that's, that's a lot up front. And they got some good linebackers, uh, 56. He's a good player. He's, he's a hell of a player. And then, uh, you know, they got some good guys in the secondary as well. And we feel like, you know, we have a good plan for, for them. And, um, you know, we feel like we can match up well. Is there an extra level of excitement, anxiousness? I mean, go to a place you guys haven't ever been, 630 kickoff after a bye week for both you guys? I think that it's, you know, Never make a game bigger than it is, is kind of my mantra, my mentality. And I was really preaching that against a and was, hey, don't make this game bigger than it is. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm sticking with. But honestly, like, I think it's fun that we're going to play at a team, a place that we've never played at. They're going to have a lot of their fans there. I mean, we travel well, but it's going to be, you know, they're going to have home field advantage. And so we kind of take that as, hey, we got to bring our own energy. We got to create our own plays. Nobody's going to go out there and bring some other energy for us. So it just, you know, really it's about us um, when we go to a place like that, especially at night. Um, you know, we're excited about that. I know you didn't see it live, but Ben uh, executed the offense pretty good after you were out the a and game. What, what did you make of that? That's expected. Uh, he's been in this offense a long time. And, uh, you know, that's, that's it. One guy goes down, another guy's got to step right in. And it's not, you know, hey, get ready. It's stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. And uh, that was what we preached. And he did a great job. And I told him I came up to him after the game. And I said, you know, hey, you know, I got a lot of respect for you. I got a lot of respect for you. And uh, just what you, know, you did out there today. And so, you know, we're good. Even at A&M, you guys never played Kentucky. I don't think. No, we did. We played them last year. Not at Kentucky, though. Played them at home. Went into overtime. And Trayvon had the uh, up and over touchdown. It was pretty fun. So you know a little bit of their, I mean, personnel. I mean, you've right. studied up for them before. Yes, obviously. And then last year, uh, they had Benny Snell on offense. They had Terry Wilson, who was healthy. You know, I hate to see that go down as, as a competitor. You know, I want to go out there and I want to play the best. And so, you know, I hate yeah, to see yeah, another quarterback like that go down. But, 
they had Josh yeah. Allen as well last you year. Got and so it's it's a different defense, but it's you know same schematic stuff like that. How much different is this offense when you have Burgs and Knox both out there on the field at the same time? It really opens it up. You can see those guys. Uh, you can make the safeties kind of respect them and respect the vertical passing game a lot more. But even when they're out, you know, we had guys like Timo who were making plays, you know, in the middle of the field, bouncing off guys and, you know, breaking tackles, stuff like that. So when you get trailing, though, you get some real speed out there. And so having that's huge. Um, and you know, teams definitely, I feel like they respect that. Did you watch Jared Lorenzen and all when you were a little kid? Yeah, I did. Um, I watched him when I was younger, but last year, uh, I remember watching over and over again the uh, Bluegrass Miracle. And really, we watched it because <laughs> Coach Fisher was trying to tell us when we shouldn't call a timeout and we should leave it for him. So I think there was, he had an opportunity to let the clock run down and then call a timeout, or it was either call a timeout or then spike it. And he had an opportunity to let the clock go down a lot. And instead, he just did it really quickly right after that play. And it gave LSU time to run a couple plays, and then, you know, the rest is history. Just the running game, you know, how much are you guys going to need that this week? That's huge. Um, that's huge for us. That's how it opens up our play action pass, opens up our drop back passing game whenever teams start to load the box, and, uh, you know, as well as RPOs, when they start bringing those guys in from different places to try to make tackles. And, Good gaps. I mean, yeah, it's a good shot. Having that running game is huge. Who would you say is your favorite target out of all the receivers you have? I'm not, I'm not going to answer that one. I am not going to answer that one because I'll hear that for the rest of the season, the rest of my two seasons here. It would be like the receivers asking for his favorite target.